Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie and today I'm doing my November wrap up. I did not read nearly as many books from my TBR that I thought I was going to read. So we're not gonna be de doing TBRs for a while because that's just not gonna work. So let me just quickly mention the books that I have in a couple of vlogs from this month. I'm not gonna go into depth. You can just watch them, but I will tell you my rating if you're too lazy to do that. <laughs> Oh God, I mean, I am too lazy. I'm not trying to call you out. Okay, God, Allie. So in this vlog, I read <laughs> Sign Here by Claudia Lux. I think I gave this a three star. We Spread by Ian Reed. These are both horror novels, by the way. And I gave this a four star. Then I read Love and Other Words. And I think I gave this one a three star as well. It's a romance. And I read The Princess Diaries, the OG YA book in diary format. And I think I might've given this five stars just because it, it brought me back. I did end up reading the next two in this series and they are, you know, not five stars, but I think the first three wrapped up an entire story and then the movie was made. So then she was like, oh, okay. And she pushed out. I think she's publishing another one this year or maybe next year where like Princess Mia gets married. Anyway, I read these next two. I think I ended up giving them three stars. They're fine. They're fun. But I feel like Mia as a character actually gets less mature. And sometimes that makes sense in a teen girl's life like when she starts having a crush on someone she suddenly gets stupid <laughs> like that has happened to me but then I started the fourth one I think I got 60% of the way through and I was like no I'm not gonna make myself reread all these okay because it was she just she was just so immature and I think she was trying or maybe she was told by her publisher or whatever I'm making shit up now but it felt like she was trying to approach a younger audience so that they could stick with Mia longer I don't know that's my theory but yeah this is a fun series if you just want my list something to listen to diary entry which is always really like makes you super close very quickly with the main character in the movie it's set in san francisco but the fun one about this it feels very similar because it's in a city mia lives in new york city there's a lot of differences between the movie and the books like the dad is not dead the grandmother is not julie andrews she's like this mean scary lady it was funny though because after i finished like the second book i saw on social media that they're making a new princess diaries movie and I was like, I think I did this. <laughs> and then I did do a video on Tell Me Lies by Carola Lovering. And honestly, this has been the book that has stayed with me longest out of all of these. I don't know what it is about this book. I gave it a four. I might bump it up to a four and a half just because I'm still thinking about it. In the video I did, I watched uh, one, one and a half episodes of this show. I think I finished the second episode, but I'm not really looking to finish it anytime soon. I know it just got signed for a season two and I feel like it's just gonna get really messy and complicated Polluted. It really felt like a different vibe than the book. Like the, the show was high, high drama. And sometimes I'm into that, but this was so kind of slow paced in a way. I, I don't know how to describe it because it was also, I couldn't put it down. I don't know. This book is, I don't know. I really liked it. So definitely check out that video if you want to know more. And then I read um, Lauren Graham's new collection of essays. Oh God, what is it called? Have I told you this already? I love personal essays, especially when they're humorous, but like actually funny. Not not just like, oh, you're a celebrity and you think you're funny and you're beautiful, so I have to laugh. But I feel like Lauren Graham really is funny and I just love her because I'm obviously, I say obviously, maybe it's not obvious, but I love Gilmore Girls, okay? For God's sake, be quiet. This is not about Gilmore Girls at all. Um, it's just about this actress's life. It goes into a lot of detail. It's a very short book, like it only took I don't know, three hours to listen to, but it goes into Lauren Graham's sort of early Hollywood days and like the struggles of auditioning and sort of the the things that she felt she had to do for society. Like it was all very funnily told. And there are a couple really heartwarming um, stories or parts of stories as well that she told. Uh, one of them made me tear up for very personal reasons. But yeah, I just, I love Lauren Graham. I feel like we could be friends. I honestly do. She just seems like this really funny, but approachable, self-deprecating, but also confident person and I love her okay so I ended up giving this a four gave me a four and a half a quick book to listen to and I felt good when I was finished and then yes I did reread the Raven cycle um we have the Raven boys the dream thieves blue lily lily blue and the Raven King this series is 
so good. I think as a series as a whole, it's a five star steep series, but I only like really think of one of these books as a five star. That would be the second one because I love the whole dreaming thing and I love Ronan. And I feel like that is that was definitely the inspiration for Lee Mandela's Summer Suns. Also, if you're hearing knocking, I just realized you might be able to hear that the neighbor's roof is being replaced. So I'm so sorry. I really like Maggie Steve Otter's character. Like that is her skill. That is her strength is her character writing. Like even the bad guys have really fledged out characters and they're very distinct and you're you're like curious about them. There's also a house full of like witchy women and there's so many of them in there that it almost feels like you would expect them to get confusing. But each one of them has a very distinct personality and it's just it's so well done, it's amazing. And I really, really want Matthew Steve Otter to write a new series or just a new book. I'm excited for something outside of this world. I do think that my ratings go down after the second one. The Raven King, I gave three and a half, which some of you might hate me for. But I feel like, especially in Blue Lily, Lily Blue, I started feeling like we weren't getting a lot of explanation of what was happening. Like the, the crew wasn't planning something and then we'd see them go to a place and then do it. it it was really just like a scene and then they jump to a scene and then in that scene they're doing something and explaining to each other that they explain this off screen. You know what I mean? It was, I don't know, it didn't feel as flawlessly done, but I mean, I still love the series. I remember when I originally read this, I really, really loved it because of the characters and you know, the relationships in all of these and the found family aspect. But I do remember being so confused by all the magic and it was easier this time around obviously because I'd read it before, but also because I'm more familiar with reading fantasy books and just accepting things as they are. However, there are some things in this book that really were not explained at all in an annoying way. Like Adam would be in the woods and he starts moving rocks and he's like, this will help the Lelines. Like what? <laughs> First of all, how does that, how do you know that? And how would that work? Just moving rocks. I, I still don't get that. I feel like Blue Lily, Lily Blue, that's so weird. I have it as a four star and then the Raven King I have as a three and a half, but I think maybe I'll swap those or maybe they'll both be fours, who knows. You know the character I'm really intrigued by and I it was so fun to read from was Piper who is a villain. She's just this bitchy, selfish person. And just the way that Maggie Steve Otter wrote her was so fascinating. And I, I, ugh, what a fun character. Anyway, that is it. Uh, it is December now. I don't have a TBR for you. I am gonna be trying to finish a few books, like maybe House of Sky and Breath. I'm looking at the size of that book right now and I'm having a little heart palpitation. And I actually have gotten back on NetGalley. So I think they'll probably, I don't know if I should just wait to put the NetGalley's in like a wrap up or maybe do a vlog for it. So let me know your opinion down below if you have one. If not, that's okay. I am really excited. I know like the new year is really arbitrary as a date for like resetting things just as the first of a month is really it really means nothing but for some reason I just cannot wait for a fresh new year so I'm really just running out the clock in December <laughs> I'm sure that's wonderful to hear, but uh, yeah. I hope everyone is doing well and I will see you in the next video.